learning that they had to discover for themselves. It became learning that involved them using what they knew and then learning about new things that they didn't know about and then how to, how to put that into what they already knew. You see, my original statement was, I don't know how you do it. That's what I said to the, to the education majors, right? I thought, who could ever be a teacher because how could you do it, right? But the statement is easier to figure out than you think. We learn how to do things all the time. We learn how to eat, how to talk, how to run, how to read, how to speak, learning how to teach, how to use a computer, how to greet one another, is much easier than you think. Because we can learn how to do things we like and we can even be taught how to do things we don't like. For example, if you want to greet a person next to you in a different way, I can just give you directions and model it and you'd be able to do it. So if I said, okay, greet the person next to you and I said, make sure you do it like this. Now you try it. See if you can do it. So you see, we can learn how to do things quite easily. I told you that I discovered a new passion. You see, passion comes from within and passion starts at the heart, and then it drives the mind and the body. Passion makes us ask the question, why do you do it? You learn how to greet someone in a different way just now. What was in your heart when you did it? Did you even think about that first? Probably not, because I just told you how to do it, and I said do it, and you did it. So really, what drives your mind and your body to greet someone this way, right? Can others feel your passion through your greeting? So let's try it. Put your passion in your heart right now and greet someone. Could be the same one, but do it the same way that I told, taught you how, but now put the passion in your heart and do it. So I could have done it like I did before and just said, Nyanjong, right? But you put passion in it and you might do it differently. Nyanjong! So now you try it. Put passion in your heart and do it. Yeah, I, I really feel the passion there, but, <laughs> but you definitely see the difference there, right? Did you feel the difference? Yes. And was there a difference in how you greeted? You didn't do it exactly the way I showed you, did you? I hope you made it your own, right? So four years ago, when I started classes for my doctorate degree, I was searching for passion to continue my work in education. I was feeling a little bit like, oh, do I really want to stay in education? Do I like what I do? I was really questioning that. I wanted to learn more about education, about learning, about leadership, about human beings, and improvement. My heart wanted something to push my mind and body to keep working in education. It was either that or I'd go back to criminal psychology at that time. <laughs> but yeah, I had a, my probation officer at home, so. <laughs> I felt the doctorate program would help me find that passion for my work. Well, at about the same time, I started my new job as an elementary school principal. So I never imagined that I would be starting a new job at the same time that I was starting a doctorate program. What I realized was that what I learned in the doctorate classes helped me recreate my passion for my work in the school. I really didn't start the doctorate program just to get a doctorate degree. 
About two years ago, my passion for my work seemed to take over. I was really busy with, with my work at my school and I was completely dedicated to making sure that my school was going to become the best school ever. But it took time away from all my studying. It meant I had to take some time to really think about, did I want to continue the doctorate program? So what was in my heart was a desire to instill hope and happiness among students and staff at my school. This meant that I had a lot of energy for work in my school and less energy for work in the doctorate program. I asked myself, why do I need a doctorate degree? I really don't need it. What am I gonna use it for? You know, I thought it's really not gonna change anything with my salary. So I thought, I don't know if I even want to continue. I was considering putting my doctorate program on hold. I know that Naying told me several times, no, you already started, you have to keep going. He wouldn't let me stop. But really then, I, I, I asked my, uh, one of my professors, Walter Enlow, who couldn't be here with us tonight, but I asked him if I should quit the doctorate program at that point. So two years ago, I said, I, I think I'm done. I'm not going to do any more. Every Friday night, every Saturday, all day, plus all of the schoolwork, reading, you know, all the readings every night to all of the papers that were due. And it wasn't just little things that were due. It was big projects every week. And I thought, I don't think I can do this. I really wanted to do one thing well. I really believe in doing one thing well instead of trying to do too many things not so well. So I almost stopped. But when I asked Walter if I should quit, he never really said, no, you should not quit. But instead he asked me, why would I want to quit now? Then he told me, instead of telling me not to quit, he said, you might be surprised at how glad you would be to actually be finished. So there again, I think Walter asked me a question and put a, something that made me curious about. I thought, yeah, I wonder how I would feel if I were done. So I didn't quit because I was curious of, okay, how does it feel to really be done? So I'm now I'm glad that I didn't quit. And I know that Nying really kept telling me, no, don't quit. But at that time, I really thought I was going to quit. But like I said, it was more that passion and that curiosity that kept me going. So through all the late, late nights of reading and writing, through pages and pages of text, and checking my citations to, to be just right, I was working on my dissertation now, organizing and reorganizing my thoughts and notes, and reading and rereading my dissertation. It was difficult to imagine that I would ever finish. What I discovered at the end of it all was that it did feel good to be finished. The day that I hit send on my computer and I sent all 209 pages. <laughs> it felt good for me, but I think more importantly, I said to my daughter, I said, Becky, I just hit send. <laughs> <laughs> 